What is happening? Welcome back to The Past Alive. Thank you all for tuning in tonight for the return of Needle in a Wax Stack, the monthly series where you head back into the past and rip open older boxes in search of legendary chase cards, autographs, inserts, whatever they may be. And this time we are heading back to the year 1991 and we're going to savagely tear into a box of low series upper deck in a desperate attempt to... Finally, pack pull the Nolan Ryan baseball heroes autograph and also possibly uncover the Michael Jordan short print SP1. Kind of also like a legendary card. I remember uh, there was a lot of hype to that card whenever we were kids back in that time. You can still pick them up these days for about 15 bucks. Uh, PSA 10s are about $400. So they're, they're definitely affordable and they're pretty easy to pack pull too. They're typically about one in every two boxes and or 72 packs. And I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever pack pulled one. After all these years, I can't say that I've ever pulled that Jordan. So maybe tonight will be the first time. We've got 15 cards for pack in uh, this 36 count box in 1991. These were apparently 99 cents at your local Kmart. Sad to say, there aren't many Kmarts left in the world. Maybe a very small handful, less than five, I would say. If that, maybe a couple. But we have 36 packs. These boxes are they're around 50 bucks nowadays. If you buy them online, I think I picked this up at a flea market maybe, I don't know, last summer, end of last season, for about 20 bucks. It has all kinds of filth. Whatever that may be inside of there, toenails, toe jam, and who knows what else at the bottom of the box. Please, remnants, bring us some luck in finding preferably the Nolan Ryan autograph in these tamper-proof and unsearchable foil packs, wrappers, featuring limited edition Heroes of Baseball cards. You couldn't get the, uh, the Hank Aaron hologram, though. Those were only in high series packs. But let's see what we got. This was... A recommendation of Tango Victory has been saying for a while, open 91 per deck. I haven't opened a box of these in almost two years on this channel for the last Needle and Wax Stack rip. I have plenty of boxes lined up. I just got a box in the mail today of 93 Leaf Update. We'll be opening that next month looking for the Frank Thomas autograph. And we have a big old set of these, 18 card set, number 10, featuring the Ryan Express. As Corey insists on calling him... And Tuna56 in the house says, love the highlights, random sequencing, understatement of the century. I assume the guy in charge of doing that was the first <laughs> hold my beer guy. What is happening, Tuna? Good to see you in here, man. I appreciate that. It's a pretty sweet card. It's, I feel like that's one you don't really see all too often. But rookie cards in uh, in the low series, looking for Mike Mussina and Trooper Jones, Jeff Bagwell. Ended up in the high series. And this is like the first year of Upper Deck that I actually didn't mind these holograms so much because they weren't tiny. They didn't fall into vents, nor did I try to stuff them into vents. But Eric Karras also has a rookie card in here. Back in 91, you better believe I was hoping for Todd Van Poppel, as I think all of us were. Can Kevin have having time of his life in the dugouts? There's Kelly Gruber, or as we call him around here, Dave Coulier, because it's definitely the exact same freaking person. No different than El DeGeneres and Wayne Gretzky. Same person, you'll never see them together. Pack number two. The Ryan Autograph, you can typically get those for several hundred bucks. I mean, they bounce all over the place, obviously. A lot of them are graded that you see in sold listings. Templeton, there's another baseball heroes, Ryan, number 16. Now the bashing years with Big Mac, Phil Bradley, Sean Barry. He's had two packs in a row. Paul L., we, we might have to be putting him on the watch list after that. There's a Baltimore Orioles hologram who for Corey, who apparently has abandoned me. He's not in here. Milt Kyler looks very timid in that photo. Terry Schumpert, Mike Lieberthal, also kind of a big prospect from this era. Tom Hankey looking dorky as always. Ken Herbeck, Billy Doran <laughs> looking very hopeful in that photo. And look at this. We got the Frank Thomas middle finger card, which people have made a big deal about. It is pretty funny, though. And I feel like it's often been overlooked. I think as a kid, I don't really think I realized that uh, that was happening there because it kind of blends in. But... Definitely flipping the freaking bird. 
The Big Hurt and Andy Bennis. Of course, is how many times do I have to say something to be seen? Well, Corey just popped in here. Bagpipes as I would call him. Well, we said that earlier. <laughs> Boom slang in the house. Says he was able to pick up like five boxes of these back then for 99 cents per box. That's crazy. Maybe the whole box cost 99 cents at Kmart. That's kind of hard to believe. It's even very, very cheap for back then, even though boxes were... Eh, I, I shouldn't say they were a lot cheaper, but... There's the Ryan Express again, since Corey is in here now. Cecil Fielder now shows up. Portrait card, Kevin Belcher. Got James Reynolds in the house. And... <laughs> Floyd fans, this guy was telling me back in the late 90s, early 2000s, he'd buy a bunch of upper deck autos from eBay for like 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, I, I foresee, my prediction is that in the future, maybe not in like the the, the near future, but uh, distant future, I think boxes like this are going to have a decent amount of value to them because of the chase for the Nolan Ryans. As people continue to rip open all this old wax, like 91 score, Series 2, looking for Mantle, 92 score, Boxes looking for those ones that are available and everything else. I think those ones are the junk wax boxes that will um, definitely be surging. This is actually an error card right here. Lou Brock and Henderson. There's no text above the 939. So that is an error card. If you error PCs, junk wax gold, people will be fighting over it. Unfortunately, 90, 91 Bowman in my stockpile of boxes that I have, I have 10 boxes of that. Because I think it's a great buy because of five Hall of Fame rookies in there. But um, I don't know if it's going to have that much value to it. These are pretty sick, too. These Heroes of Baseball. You could actually get autographs out of these as well. I don't even know if I've ever packed, pulled an insert of these. But uh, Homer and Killebrew is the first card of this insert set. I think I saw someone maybe pack, pull a Fergie Jenkins auto out of one of those. Ramon Martinez portrait card. Daryl Hamilton is flat top. 444 in the house. Lansford Alfredo Griffin was definitely high in that photo. About to miss that throw. Dirk Remington to the abandonment list. <laughs> Corey said that. Dirk Remington has been around in a long time. He very well might be, uh, I don't know, he might be on his way to the abandonment list. It's been probably a month or so since we've seen him. Hopefully that's not the case. Tony Gwynn, Scott Lucader stomping around in the batter's box like he's throwing a temper tantrum of some kind. Joe Klink, Omar Oliveris. Scott Ruskin, Alex Fernandez, kind of a big name around this time as well. I was definitely pumped on him as an angry little kid that um, didn't really like too many players, I should say. Maybe Jose Lean. I don't know. I'm not really sure why. I hate all these other players, but like Jose Lean so much. Couldn't really tell you. The unofficial sponsor of tonight's video and every other video on this channel. Of course, we now have obtained the caffeine-free Zevia. So, I'm thankful for that. Paul says, love Billy Ashley to death. Yeah, I definitely love Billy Ashley. And Billy Ashley was on my Tony La Russa 2 team. And he would hit a home run, at least one to three home runs every game. And then he would get hurt after that for like 12 games. There's the big cat as Corey insists on calling him. Orlando Merced rookie card was definitely... A good one in my collection back then. Jeff Conan, rookie, also was a decent one at one point in time. There's Joe Orsalak. Also kind of looking like Dave Coulier. Not really sure why so many major leaguers at this time resemble Dave Coulier. But something, there's definitely something more to that. Dave Coulier is the meaning of life or something. William McGee. Michael A. says he's probably out swashbuckling through 100-year-old chewing gum in search of the perfect <laughs> piece. <laughs> I missed who he's talking about. We have the Indian singer. Ken Patterson, Jose De Leon. So no sign of the Jordan SP yet. Dwight Smith, definitely a fake smile on that call, card. Jason McClancy's 91 Per Deck is still one of my favorite sets of all time. It's, it's definitely an awesome set. Very nostalgic. And for some reason, these cards aren't flipped upside down every which way. This card always has creeped me the hell out, though. Jeff Montgomery, the smile is very devious. The unibrow has connected. And it, it just looks like he is about to go on some sort of savage murdering spree or something. Very sadistic and maniacal look to his face. 
This leaves me with an uncomfortable feeling. And the unibrow doesn't do it any justice either. So it's a creepy card. Is it as creepy as Jeff Bittiger's 89 Tops? I don't know. But that card's pretty freaking creepy too. You need to judge of that. Well, the unibrow says, always love me a good unibrow. You got to pay homage to the better ones. Domingo Ramos, Dave Stewart shows up. Bobby Bo also having the time of his life. Now a Mariners hologram for Paul L. Jack Doherty sliding in. Waldy Whitehurst. Those sea blue eyes always gave me the creeps. Pete in Cavilia. David Cohn. And Jeff Gray is going to end this pack. Paul L. is demanding a Mike Walkton sighting. When someone demands a Mike Walkton sighting, you give the people what they want. And Mike Walkton is indeed here in this snow globe, soon to be snow globe, and soon to be rotating permanently. But uh, the magical and mystical Mike Walkton levitating 92 Stadium Club card. Caught just in the act of levitating on the horizon. Mike Walkton, we salute you wherever you are if you are watching this. But apparently, Mike Walkton has seen my videos or at least one of the videos looking for his rookie card, and he was pretty freaking stoked on it. So we salute him. Wilfredo Cordero, another guy I did not like back then. I actually um, was. Uh, Pretty opposed to Wilfredo Cordero for some reason. There's a crime dog, as Corey calls him. Gary Carter. Chetty Ofu with the walked in emoji. Kevin Elster. Tigers hologram sticker. Kevin Bass, of course, is going to show up. He does have pants on in that photo. And they are not an abnormal color. Alan Trammell, Ted Power. Signing an autograph. Looking real pissed off like someone just pinched his cheeks. Kind of an awkward photo. Bill Long. Avery Harnish, Bobby Witt Sr., and no Jordan in that pack. But we are still hopeful to find one or the other. Jose Montez says sticker is also used as a mirror. You definitely could use it as one. Nolan Ryan and again, 14 of 18. James Reynolds says you should get some retail of New Heritage. The Walmart Monster Box are cool for the price. I saw some. I, I bought a couple packs last night. I couldn't help myself. I bought a fat pack of 2022 Series 2. I was hoping I could maybe find a SSP in there of wit, but no such thing. I bought a pack. I think it was a value pack of Prism, maybe two. Or was it Mosaic? I honestly forget. Phil Plantier rookie car was a big rookie back then, though. I'm feeling the battle cry as he strikes out. Angels hologram. Kinger, who's senior and junior, that would definitely warrant a $200 price tag at a local flea market because they're both pictured. So, got to jack the price up because of that. Randy Ready. Merced rookie once again. Mark Grace shows up. Junior Ortiz to Don the Shields for Corey's PC. Jerome Walton. Brian Harper crawling around in the dirt, and Bill Wegman. Unfortunately, it's not Bill Wegman's 92 upper deck super short print hologram that most of the world does not know about. Kevin Epson, how many packs are we looking at here? At 36 packs in a box. We've opened probably about, I don't know, how many? 10 so far. Terry Lee sitting in timeout, apparently. Clancy, Don Paul. We have Mike Gardner. Rather creepy in that photo. Phillies hologram sticker now shows up. Putting these all over my Trapper Keeper. As soon as this video is over. I haven't only really seen any cards flipped upside down yet. Corey Snyder shows up. Don Slot. Steve Finley. Carlos Quintana. And Joe Oliver. Looking real pissed on that photo. With no sign of the SP yet. I went back through my last video almost two years ago to see if I pulled that Jordan. Uh, I didn't see it in there. So I don't think I've ever pack pulled that in my life. And if it's pack pulled, it's a PSA 10 automatically. The Suede Boggs is a pretty cool card because of some sort of strange blue orb floating up there. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be part of the background, but it looks like he's looking right at it. And I'm obsessed with that card because of that. Darren Lewis, Tony Fernandez shows up. Blue Jays. 
Sticker Hollow, Jimmy Kramers. That's definitely a fake name. I don't remember him whatsoever. Does anyone remember Jimmy? He batted 110 in 1990 in 73 bats, but he did homer. 27 strikeouts. Not the ideal player, but uh, I don't think I've ever seen that card, so it's a Mandela effect, and I've never heard of him. Lance Johnson, <laughs> Saber Hagen, sucking on a lollipop, or about to. <laughs> card's always pretty funny. Mark Parent. Wilson, Pedro Guerrero, personal favorite of mine many, many moons ago. Bruce Hurst. Paul L says, some game Eric and John used to play <laughs> Al Padrique and stuff. I've been here for like two girlfriends at a card shop. What was that dog's name with the flop ears? Was that Charlie? That was that was three girlfriends ago, I think. Maybe four. That was a long, that was like 2019. Whose autographs are on that ball is what I want to know. I guess you guys can't see it. Much easier for me than to see through my phone than uh yeah, it's tough to make those out, but I was hoping we'd be able to do that. Charlie who bit the tattoos, artist proof. Yeah, back then it was a much more valuable card than now. But uh yeah, Charlie was a he was a good dog. I definitely miss him. Ryan, insert Lieberthal rookie again, Sean Berry rookie. Paul L. put Sean Berry on the Omen list before <laughs> he became Mr. Ringworm. There's Luis Gonzalez rookie card. Probably see that in uh, a rookie lot in the next auction. Royals sticker shows up. Sheffield. Lance McCullers, McDowell, Barfield, Billy Dorn once again. There's Lee Smith and his battle cry. Ron Robinson, dorkier than ever, and everyone in the background knows it, although we got some sweet... 90s threads in that photo. I'm obsessed with it. Jimmy Key. Looking pretty freaking badass in that photo. We are trudging onward. Tamper-proof wrappers. There's no way that you're really resealing these. Unless you're super careful, you take the cards out to the very top of the pack and then somehow put a piece of tape over it without people noticing. Kind of tough to do. Another Ryan insert, Baseball Heroes. We have another Phil Plantier rookie in here. Been big bucks as a young lad in 1991. Gollickson and Dave Gallagher. Okay, so let's go Magic, John, Magic Jackson rookie cards. <laughs> the TMNT movie made me think Jose Canseco wasn't too good with the comment Raphael made. Juan Berenger. Shane Mack, Jeff Blauser. Used to not like Jeff Blauser either back then. Dennis Rasmussen and Greg, a very lonely Greg Myers is going to end that pack. Not seeing a whole lot of big names. No sign of Chipper Jones rookie or Mike Mussina yet. There's Glenn Davis. We have Eric Karos rookie now shows up. Looking quite upset because Mike Piazza has not yet come into his life. Ron Darling, Joe Girardi now shows up. Mariners... Hologram once again. Todd Benzinger. I don't think this is a Todd Benzinger that was in the Antique Mall, Maryland with a five-cent price tag on it. I thought it was 91 per deck, but I don't think it was this one. Maybe it was 90 per deck. But regardless, somebody confirmed when they went there recently that that car was no longer there. Someone had bought that Todd Benzinger. I envy whoever that was. There's Gibby, as Corey calls him. And Mike Marshall ends... That freaking pack. Ripping right through. Tomorrow I will have uh, the Trash Bag Wax Part 1. And then Part 2 will be on Monday for Mail Day. we got the Home Run Hunt. And uh, tomorrow will be the Junk Wax Auto Lotto. Cruck, Billy Hatcher, Blue Jays yet again. Eric King, there's Candy Audi. Randolph, we see a checklist card. After all this time, his second year, Dave Justice having the time of his life. Charlie Huff, Rob Dibble shows up. <laughs> That's probably the card that made me hate Rob Dibble. He just looks really cocky and smug and arrogant in that photo. And I'm pretty sure that my brother and I, that was it was at that defining moment, or close to it, that we hated him. And Jim Clancy. And that pack. We still got plenty more to rip into to make this 
a reality. The pack pull, the Jordan. Ryan insert once again. We got Matt Williams Porter now starting it off. But a lot of dupes, obviously. Carter, Pat Borders, Red Sticker. John Franco now shows up. Lee Guterman, Mike Henneman, Bob Melvin, Melito Perez for Jonathan H. Jonathan H., if you are hanging on the background, lingering, I am trying to use this card to summon you since this is his biggest PC. For whatever reason, Jonathan H. decided to collect Melito Perez about a couple of years back. Please send him all of your Melito Perez gear. Still binge watching Seinfeld. You know what? I really haven't watched too much Seinfeld at all. It's more so Highway to Heaven. <laughs> it's been that way for a long time. I guess I'm a creature of habit. So I started watching something. I just watched the same thing over and over again, apparently. Andre Santana looks like some sort of flesh eating bacteria has literally taken over half of his face. Raphael Palmero. Kurt Stillwell. Any offensive writing on these bats? Something on that one. I can't tell, tell what it is. Bond shows up. Alfredo Griffin once again. The hologram. Edgar Diaz and his eclipse glasses. Trammel. Mulholland. Ruben Sierra is actually a pretty cool photo, though. It's one of the better photos in uh, this set. Vaughn Hayes. Just looking like he's scared of life. Mike Heath. Rodriguez and a second year Jeff King to end that pack. We got Trevor Williams in the house. Is Jimmy Kramer's claim to fame as being part of a trade for Otis Nixon who stole 72 bases in 1991. Trevor Williams, thank you for bringing the facts and the baseball trivia knowledge in here because I had no idea. I don't think I've ever heard that name or said that name in my entire life, but uh, it's definitely interesting. Appreciate that. Harold Reynolds shows up now. And Davis, Spike Owen, Joel Skinner. How many Mar <laughs> Paul, I'll put this Mariners hologram on the Omen list. This is like, how many of these have we pulled? That's like at least three, maybe four. Travis Fryman, big name from this time. Alvin Davis. There's Tim Tuffle. We used to hate Tim Tuffle too. I'm not really sure why because he always like seemed like he was a very happy-go-lucky guy, always smiling, but... That's why we hated him. I don't know. Kent Merker and Bob Walk. Paul L. is putting the Mariners hologram on the Omen list. Floyd Fences, Rob Dibble, the guy who got in a fist fight with his manager, looks smug. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? <laughs> yeah, honestly. That's definitely multiple reasons why we did not like Rob Dibble. There are many, to be exact, but... One of the main ones is probably because of that freaking card. Sandberg shows up the first time. The Sox. The Tuffle Shuffle. <laughs> Navarro, Hawkins, and Matt Noakes. Another guy I was not particularly fond of back around this time. We did not like the Reds. We hated Hal Morris also. Did not like the Reds back in 91. Now we finally get some flipped upside down cards. Dave LaPointe. Kiki Jones. Got Sandy Almar Jr. portrait. Bell. Paul Gibson. Got look at the back. Absolutely. Ladies' man. Jeffrey Leonard. Indians sticker yet again. Tony Gwynn. Roger McDowell. Mike Harkey. So we're seeing some new faces. Donnie Baseball shows up. Corey says, you were such an angry little kid. I, see, it sounds like I was a real angry kid, but like I don't know if I was that angry. I feel like I had a great childhood, but like maybe I was very judgmental and just. <laughs> There's a lot of players I guess I like too, but I, I don't mention those as much. Probably because it was primarily Jose Leaned and um, who else? Billy Ashley. All all the prospects like uh, Scott Brocious. I was probably real pumped on him br briefly in like '92. Jason Bure. Didn't last real long. I feel probably, I'm guessing, like, a lot of the hatred, now I think about it, like, a good bit of it probably came from Tony La Russa baseball, too, for Windows DOS. Windows 95, or I don't even know if we had 95 back then, but I'm guessing probably not. But, um, so if you had one of these players on your team and they sucked, or, you know, someone would lose a game for you, okay, I hate that guy. <laughs> so, like, I honestly think that's where a decent amount of it came from. 
There's a lot of it I don't, I don't really remember. Scott Cooper? Like, I, I'm pretty sure I hated Scott Cooper. Well, I probably had him on my Tony 2 team, and, like, maybe he struck out when I needed him to come through in one of the games. It's like, all right, I hate that guy. And it very well could be the reasoning for a lot of this hatred. This is Roberto Alomar, literally ballerina, or some sort of Michael Flatley river dance action happening in that portrait. We've got a Sabo showing up the first time. A former arch enemy of mine, but uh, I don't know if we—I don't know if you can really say we buried the hatchet. Whenever Joseph C. A.K. Waldy Moon bought me a cameo by Chris Sabo for my birthday a couple of years ago, absolutely freaking epic. Travis Dowdy in the house says the best part about listening to Dan Patrick on ESPN Radio years ago was when Dibble was his co-host and Dib's wife would call in and rip on him. I don't remember that at all. I never, ever heard about that. That is absolutely epic. I wonder if I can find that on YouTube somehow. I guess if it was the radio show. I don't know if it would actually be on YouTube or not, but that is pretty freaking hysterical. Travis D., check out his channel if you have not uh, subbed to him. If one of you guys could post a link. We got Dykstra, second year Knobloch. Mike Balecki. So he's up to no good. Caught red-handed doing something they shouldn't have been. There's Spanky LaValier. Brian Charles says, generally hatred is a sign of chemical imbalance. Only right by a trip to Taco Bell. You know what? I just went to Taco Bell not too long ago. And it was glorious. It was much needed after like three days of not going there. Brent Knackert was the last time he said that name. Bob Malacky. Steve Buschel, the scraggly little mullet flapping the wind, and Wayne Edwards sends that pack. <laughs> Peeping on the girl next door. <laughs> so we're kind of getting down to the nitty-gritty here. Mike Sims to greet us. Bill Long shows up. And Brooke Fordyce rookie card. Can you use his stickers as solar panels? <laughs> I mean, that probably make for a pretty good video. If I take, if I get enough boxes of those, rip a bunch of packs, put those on a roof. Attempting to make solar panels out of baseball holograms. It'd be a pretty good video. I feel like we should probably put that on the list of videos to make. Paul L. Second year, Larry Walker. Darren Lewis, Don Slot shows up. Ozzy Seiko, Very, very overshadowed by his older brother, who is also featured in this card. That'd probably be another $100 flea market card, honestly. Looking forward to seeing some of those. Hopefully, I'll get out to some places this weekend. Although, it's not supposed to be uh, too nice of weather. There's Rex Hudler, who I pronounced dead not too long ago here. He's very much still alive and breathing. I always like that Nolan Ryan card. That's a pretty sick photo of him. Mike Sims looking real pissed. <laughs> Sabal says, only John would know that's a second year knob lock. <laughs> Probably true. The government will show up and shut down your free power source. <laughs> of course, I like when we get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah, we definitely, definitely balls deep in the nitty gritty right now. Carlton Fist Porter shows up. Dave Gallagher, Denny Darwin, Steinbach, Steve Olin. There's the Blue Jays hologram sticker again. Yvonne Calderon. Welch, there is the Hawk for Corey. Sweet Lou Whitaker. Got lots of nicknames from Corey in this release. And Storm Davis. Mike Hartley ends that back. Floyd Fence is Rex Hudler getting between <laughs> Ventura and Nolan Ryan. <laughs> Risky move. Did he really? Did he really get between them? It's been a while since I've watched that brawl. Probably, I don't know, maybe about two years ago, I think it was the last time I watched it. Ballerina Alomar, once again, Sam Horn. He always looks so pissed off. Probably another guy I didn't really care for back around this time. McGriff, Harold Reynolds, we now have a Padres sticker for Tango. Joey Cora leaping around. Scott Lucader, Rex Hudler yet again. Luis Salazar, Clark, and Rob Murphy. Joel Berry says the PC Steve Olin in the early 90s. And we got this baseball heroes insert yet again. Henry Rodriguez definitely had some good seasons. Was a decent one to pull back in the 90s. 
Uh, James Reynolds says, how many triple image cards are in this set? Triple image? Uh, well, you have... Let's see. Who do you... Uh, I'm trying to think. There's definitely a couple. I feel like this one I don't know as well as I know 89 or 92. I can think of a few to be exact in the other ones, but I can't think of any in this set. I don't think there's any in 91. Is that a trivia? Is that a trick question? Paul Sorrento? Griffey, Ryan Henderson. So when you say triple image, I'm thinking of the actual like motion shots, triple image cards, like Ken Griffey Jr.'s 92 per deck. Uh, a card that I love a lot. That one or like Jim Abbott's 89 upper deck rookie, like the tri like the motion cards. And those were kind of what I'm thinking. Reggie Sanders rookie card, Dave Martinez. There's a Reggie Sanders rookie for Corey, who I'm sure will be stoked on seeing that rookie pulled. Yeah, Nolan Ryan was 1989. Wasn't Ryan in 1889? <laughs> Oh, Ryan's card in 1889. That'd be pretty crazy. I would like to track down some cards. Uh, I think I tried looking on eBay before, but, like, what's the oldest baseball card that you have? Like, does anybody have cards from the 1800s? Be sick. Johnson, Charlie Huff. I've seen them before from, like, I forget exactly what year it was from, but I've seen uh, some from the late 1800s that um, it'd be sick to have a card from back then. I think my the oldest one I probably have is 1909. It's probably a T206. I don't think I have anything prior to that, but it'd be pretty freaking wild to get something from the 1800s. Chloe Adams says, always got one Jordan card out of uh, one out of four boxes. Chloe, thank you. Yeah, you know, it's definitely not uh, not guaranteed to uh, get one in two boxes. That just seems to be the odds, mostly. But uh, yeah, there's definitely times where people have opened up more than two boxes and not found them. But yeah, one in four, I could see that being right, too, between... Bernie Williams, second year. Frank White, Wally Backman, R.J. Reynolds. A Bucko's pack. Shame since I've seen one out of three. Yeah, kind of between one and every other and one and four. Kipper, Dion James, Brady Anderson, Radinsky, and John Wetland is just having a great freaking time in that photo. We have to, of course, be looking out for offensive signage in the background. We got seven packs left. Actually, I lied about that. We have way more than that. We got nine packs left. We're going all freaking night tonight. And lucky for all of you guys, I have a case of 91 Fleer Rack Packs on reserve. So we have that uh, very feminine-like Roberto Alomar starting things off and another Carmen Killebrew. That's pretty cool. I like those inserts. I don't remember ever seeing those uh, from a pack when I was younger. My dad bought me a Jordan SP for my birthday in 91. I found it two years ago in a faded top loader. That's sick, man. That had to have been a good moment to find that all these years later. John Dobson, Lee Brandt, Scott Geraltz, the Shields, Walton, Harper, and Joey Cora jumping around. And Paul L., we have to open a box of Tops Kids at some point. I have two of them, and I don't really have a purpose or two of them. Squints says, it led me to you. That's pretty freaking awesome, man. I love to hear that. Ron Hass, he starts it off. First time seeing him. Cooper rookie once again. Randy Milligan. Tina Martinez. Greenwell, Conseco. The trash can bangers cometh in the form of a hologram. Lenny Harris. Tommy Herr. Galavin shows up for the first time. Dennis Martinez. And Mike Marshall ends that pack. James Reynolds says, is it about pulling it? Um, no, I, I have the uh, I have the Jordan short print. It's more so, I mean, you have Jordan, you have the chance to pull to Jordan and also the Nolan Ryan. So this series is, is centers and focuses on pulling these hard-to-pull cards. The Jordan, obviously, um, is a very popular one. I feel like a lot of people know about that one. Not as many know, know about the Nolan Ryan auto, I don't think. I feel like everyone knows Jordan's first baseball card, even people that uh, haven't collected in many, many years. So for me, it's mostly I'd like to get some of these autos for my PC by pack pulling them because that'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, mostly just to pack pull them to see how hard it really is to find some of these. I've opened a lot of boxes of uh, different releases over the years and 
I've never actually pack pulled, other than the Elite out of 91 Donruss, that was the only time I really pack pulled like a, a big chase card. Like a. Finding a needle in a haystack. Hence the name of the series, Needle in a Wax Stack. That's exactly why it is called that because some of these, very tough to pull. And then uh, sometimes you get really lucky and you see stories where people are uh, buying, they buy one pack from their LCS, or as around here we like to call it the Lord, but uh, we like to say local LCS, obviously. But you get one pack from there, there's Dodgers. And you pull it, pull like, uh, you know, one of the franchise autographs from 92. Strawberry, almost looked like he had a cheek piercing there for a second. Dicky Thon, who, there's one YouTuber that actually said uh, Dicky Thon was in the Hall of Fame. We salute that guy. Bill Landrum and Mike Sims, real pissed off. Still, five packs remain. Since then, I pulled an elite Matt Williams, 92 Donruss. That's sick, man. Yeah, elites are tough. They they are definitely tough. I feel like I've opened a lot of early 90s Donruss in my life, and I've only ever pulled the one, and it took me 16 boxes to find it. And you're not even guaranteed finding one in a case of Donruss. And that was a tough rip to do. <laughs> I'm sure Paul L. and I'm, I'm sure a bunch of the other guys remember me opening that case of 20 boxes of 91 Donruss looking for that elite. And uh, hopefully I'll do that again at some point, like 92 Fleer looking for like Clemens Auto or something along those lines. If I can find a case... For like a relatively good price, I will do it. But cases of older wax have they've gone wild just because I feel like they're being depleted. You don't see those as often as you see just loose wax boxes. There's Will the Thrill Clark, as Corey calls him. First time seeing that in this box. Pause. I'm just waiting for my Jennifer Love Hewitt rookie to get here in the mail. <laughs> well, everything from the auction went out today. So if you bought anything in the auction, it was sent out today including the breaks from this week. There's Eckersley. Derek May, I was definitely a big fan of Derek May for a few weeks, probably back in 91, 92. And Eric Shaw, who is no longer with us. And then there were four. Four packs remained. James Reynolds says, everything runs out eventually, even stuff printed the moon and back. It's definitely true. Um, I mean, it's crazy, though, because if you go on YouTube, or if you go on eBay right now, you type in 87 Tops box, like, the amount of listings on there for 87 tops is, is freaking insane. Like they just they printed millions and millions of these cards. Like I've I've heard, you know, four to six million, then I've heard like actual uh like shop owners saying that they heard it was more like twenty million um of each card or boxes. I forget what he even said, but it's wild. But eventually it will dry up. I, I, I some stuff quicker than others, obviously. I think that the stuff that has chase cards in it, like, you know, a release like this that has a possible Nolan Ryan autograph or more so the Mickey Mantle autos and, like, uh, the stuff like that will probably be more valuable sooner, I would think, as that stuff dries up and there's less of it out there. The desire to have those boxes will be much more. And I'm not saying they're going to be, like, 500 bucks a box, but I could see them getting to be $100 a box or maybe even a little more than that because uh, some of those autographs command high price tags, especially once they're graded. I've seen uh, you know, the raw mantle sell for a thousand bucks from ninety one score. Pretty wild. Todd McConnell says, Todd New Jersey, love your channel. Can you rank your top five favorite error cards? Todd, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. Top five error cards. Ooh, put me on the spot here. All right, so obviously the Frank Thomas Noting on front is one of my favorite errors. I would have to say Let's see here. What other ones do I like a lot? Obviously, Billy Ripken F face. Now, if I had to put them in order, uh, that'd be tough, man, because Billy Ripken F face is such an iconic card. I feel like that has to be way up there on one on the top five. But the Nutty front is like the most. That's like my white whale to own that card and have it. So I would probably have to say the Nutty front would be first and then the F face. Um,. What else do we have in my era collection? I'm thinking mostly junk wax, junk wax era. I really like the uh, the Tom Glavin John Smoltz era in '90 Don Russ. I've liked that one ever since I was a kid. So I'd probably put that on my top five, even though it really has no value to it. It was corrected, and there was a ton of them printed. 
Um, as a kid, I remember pack pulling that, and I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, and I, I didn't even know about it back then. I'm like, wait a second, that's not John Smoltz. It's Tom Glavin. And like, I thought I'd like figured out like you know some crazy mathematical equation. Only to I think I went to my Beckett after that, and I think it was like 15 cents in there. I was like, <laughs> that, well, that sucks. But I still loved it. Uh, you know, regardless, there's a Sosa second year card. So that's three air cards. There's Ripken. Mickey Hatcher and that massive glove that he carried around for many years. Um, help me out here, guys. What are, what are some of my other favorite error cards I've talked about? We got three out of five. I'm trying to think of like more prominent ones, not like... I mean, probably Paul Gibson crotch grab 89 score. I, I would say that one has to be on there, too, because that card is freaking epic. Um... Yeah, Paul Gibson, Paul F says, yeah, Paul Paul Gibson will probably be number four, I would say. Love that card. And the PSA 10s of that are pretty expensive now, too. They're like several hundred bucks. And um, it's tough to say. The Bonds, Johnny Ray, that one's freaking awesome, too. I don't know if I knew about that one as a kid. Expos uh, symbol is pretty awesome, though. I, I wish the Expos would come back. I'm putting that on my freaking car. <laughs> I'm taking that and putting that on my car tomorrow when I go to the flea market. That's sick. Burt Blylevin, or as Corey calls him, Burt, be home by 11 with a beach ball. Having a time of his freaking life. Randy Johnson Marlboro card is number five. Thank you, Corey, for that. Yeah, that card is freaking epic. I love that one, too. Paul O'Neill from Mikey G. So there we have. It's very tough for me to place those in order because I, I like them all for different reasons. But I would say that would be my solid five in order. Again, very tough between the 91 front and Billy Ripken because Billy Ripken has such a history behind it. <laughs> Chaos is 90 on rust, line of a name. Uh, actually, you know what? Scrap that entire list and just say 1990 Fleer, Jose Ribe, birth date error. How about Alex Madrid, 89 on rust? We can make a list of those. And we have all kinds of shrapnel left over from these packs. Todd, hopefully that was an okay answer for you. Sorry, it was so hard for me to think of which ones I like. But uh, to put them in order, you definitely got uh, the brain juices flowing. Sabal says, no Mucinas. No Mucinas in the entire box and no Chipper Jones. I feel like I got robbed at gunpoint. The all-name on front. Yeah, Auerbosky is a sick error, too. And, like, Melita, the, no, not the Melita Perez, but the Pascal Perez 82 tops, no position on front. They're not, like, real significant errors. They are cool. Like, um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many you could def you can, that you can name that are freaking sweet. But um, I was trying to think of, like, the, the coolest ones. Nolan Diamond King, wrong back. That's right, from, from 90 Donruss. Mike Henneman. The Jeter Bush Mantle, the short print. So the last pack of this mix, and of course, we have an A's sticker, but since somebody brought it up, I feel like I have to show these. We, it's been a little while since we've shown these three prominent cards, like the Mickey Weston, the three-headed Mickey Weston. This is the Nick West SSP. This is a true one-of-one. One. It is a PSA 10, but how about these four error cards, like the Marlboro Red featuring Randy Johnson on the scoreboard? Or the Frank Thomas all name on front parallel. Absolutely epic courtesy of Chaos 11624. Yount 86 Sport Flicks. That's a sick one, too. The Yankees team printed on the back. That's an awesome one. It's a very valuable card. You cannot find those for cheap at all. I think there's like a couple listed on eBay that are like freaking 400 bucks or more. Puffs Coast is that all name on front. <laughs> there's Sandberg. Got Sanders rookie card again. And a I did not like him either back in the day. Again, he, he's probably on my Tony La Russa team, and I hate him. Dwight Evans, Jim Abbott, Bunting, Pat Border. So overall, we got kind of a crappy box. I think my favorite card of that box, outside of the Heroes of Baseball, Harmon Killebrew inserts, is this freaking Expos sticker. Because I like it. I like that logo. I wish the Expos would come back. And uh, just please, take the Nationals, give me the Expos back. And also getting back to the 80s and 90s. And I'd be quite content with that. But um, still, at the end of the day, I still have these three beauties in front of me. So I can't complain that much. And um, the investment of this $2,000 Brian Fisher 88 tops. What else could you really want out of life besides that stuff? So that's it. We struck out yet again a needle in a wax stack. That's not going to deter me from swashbuckling through another box of something next month. 
So that will be 93 Leaf Update. Looking for Frank Thomas autograph. But I will be back tomorrow night for the Trash Bag Wax Rip. Looking for some of these exact autographs that we discussed tonight. And then Sunday, hopefully, we'll have a weekend recap for you guys. So thank you guys all for being here. You guys freaking rule. I will see you back tomorrow night.